What's going on creatives? So today I want to share with you the five ways I make money as a creative and these are going to be experiences from my past and things that I still apply today. So first things you want to do is you have to perfect your craft before you actually jump into uh, into becoming a full-time freelance content creator photographer you want to make sure that you actually put on the hours before actually jumping into the fire because otherwise uh, people are going to notice the quality of work that you are delivering and if you are not certain about what you're doing people are going to notice your clients are going to notice and you're going to lose business so first things first you want to make sure that you already put on the works as a full-time creative graphic designer photographer whatever it is that you're doing uh, you, you are already perfect that in the craft I work. I worked six years in a company called Folofile, a sports memorabilia company, and they specialize in frame products, wall decor. Basically, what we would do is create different products based on the photography that we would get from the photographers that go to the games. This is where I learned the best practices for color correction, graphic design, retouching work, and also branding. Before I grabbed a camera for the first time, I really retouched like thousands of pictures. This is how I build my certainty and confidence before I actually jumping into the game out there as a as a solo freelance, as, a indep as an independent filmmaker. So now I'm gonna give you my top five strategies to make money as a creative slash photographer, filmmaker, whatever you are specializing on. Number one, working with Model Mayhem. Model Mayhem is a community of photographers, retouchers, makeup artists, and models. The first day that I joined Model Mayhem, I got work, I got paid work. I got a couple of requests from retouching work and uh, I started doing some retouching for other photographers. And this was my first source of income outside of my full-time job. So from nine to five, I was doing my regular activities as a, as a retoucher, digital artist. And from 5 p.m. to midnight, I was connecting with other creatives, connecting with other photographers and models to build a portfolio in photography. They also have a casting call area where you can actually take a look and leave comments. And if there's something that interests you, you can actually reach out to the photographer, to the producer, to whoever is in charge, in in charge of the project. This is where I met Aaron and, and Model Mayhem. Back in the day we were both starting out and he wanted to expand his portfolio and this is this is where we met for the first time. We took a couple of cool pictures and this is how actually I started my final career. It was because of a, an accident, a collaboration. I was knocking doors, I was experimenting and collaborate and looking for to collaborate to build up a portfolio. Number two is digital products, stock photography, stock footage. And there are several websites, but I started working with graphicriver.net, which is uh, owned by the company Mbato. So to me, uh, as a personal experience, this didn't work out very well because I spent a lot of time like building a great template. Uh, I have two products in the website. So basically I built a Photoshop action so you can do all these really cool type treatments, typography work. You would only have to type whatever you want, the name, title, and it would give you like a really cool three-dimensional look. To me, uh, that was like a really cool result. I spent like three full days of work in order to make it work, just so you can click on it and have the type treatment done for you. The, the setback on this website is that they really, they price your products like really low. So basically, in order to make a living from these websites, you have to have a bunch of products. So I only had two products that they would sell for about $3 each. They would take the 50%, I would get the other 50%, and they sold pretty good actually. They sold like 70 times. That's why I stopped making products for them because the effort that I put on into these products, it didn't justify the amount of work that I was putting on. So in three days of work to make $3, it, wasn't, it, it, just, it just wasn't working. So I stopped doing that. My advice is this would be a great option if you are actually living outside of the US because in, in other countries like South America, making a dollar is more difficult to make it out there than it is here in the US. So to me actually finding actual clients was more re reliable than spending three or four days making one product that would sell for two dollars. So number three, portrait photography and headshots. So one of the areas that I wanted to specialize in when I started photography is studio photography and headshots. I really enjoy the fact that I can have all the control in my studio as far as lighting, as far as uh, postures, and I don't basically avoiding the hassle of being on, on being on really crowded events. I'm not a, I'm not a wedding photographer 
Although the best paid gigs are actually wedding photography. I prefer to shoot in a studio, that's what I like, and I, I don't like shooting events, even though, even though I actually shoot events uh, occasionally, but it's, it's, I don't specialize in um, I don't specialize in events. When you hire a headshot photographer or a portrait photographer, the first thing you're gonna notice is their Facebook profile. So to me, my Facebook profile picture is a, has been a, actually a marketing tool to advertise my portrait and photography work. I always post in social media, I'm very active in social media sharing what I'm doing. So if I take a portrait of, of someone, I always post it in social media. If I'm taking pictures of uh, my brothers, my family, that, that's something we do a lot, like martial arts films and, and digital art. So I always, I always keep my social media account updated because that's that's the that's the easiest way to to connect with other people. It's like you are starting conversations, you are sharing your work, and people notice. Sometimes people don't engage with your content, but they're still looking at what you're doing. And with photography work, is you want to show it as much as possible. So be engaged in social media, take photographs, have a great profile picture because people are gonna judge your your profile picture. If I wanna work with a headshot photographer and his or her headshot is in pretty bad shape, I'm don't, I don't wanna work with them. My headshot in my Facebook headshot is almost like my business card. So keep that in mind. Number four, filmmaking. So I started making films in 2015 with my with my DSLR camera, my Nikon D5100, a crop sensor camera. Um, this was great because I, I didn't know I could do video with my DSLR back then. Not many people were doing YouTube like they're doing it today. Like people are going crazy with blogging and stuff. So the reason I did it, the reason I started doing filmmaking is because I wanted to show the behind the scenes of my digital artwork. I was doing a lot of fine artwork and I, was, I wanted to do some time lapses videos, uh, retouching videos, and that's what I did. So I started polishing my work with filmmaking to the point that today I actually make a living as a filmmaker. There's a, here's the deal, there's a huge trend about making video content out there and actually Facebook is putting more emphasis on video content than photography work. So all these social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, they're encouraging content creators to make video content. You have an advantage here because companies are looking for good quality content that they that they can promote their products. Uh, they can do, they can document uh, their their activities and basically just be active in social media. So yeah, so far in 2017, I produced at least at least like 14 to 15 films already, short films. Uh, I I don't produce like long feature films. Uh, but I produce a lot of short films. There is a huge demand for filmmakers and content creators. So if you have a DSLR or if you want to invest on a DSLR, right now every every camera in the market, every DSL, entry DSLR level camera is going to give you a great result. Most of the cameras do 4K. At the, at the agency we're working on, we are actually switched to Sony because we do both things. We do photography work and we do filmmaking work. And on my background, in my background especially, I do fine art photography work, so I need a camera that it allows me to do photography and filmmaking as well. Number five, recruiting agencies. Here's the deal, before I quit my full-time job, I connected with several recruiting agencies. So you can actually do this online, do some research in your area, but also you can actually get in touch with recruiting agencies all across the US because sometimes you can do some work remotely. You can work remotely. I live here in New York and there's a huge demand for designers, retouchers. Uh, what I found is that they are not looking that much for photographers. The reason it, this didn't work out for me very well was because I was looking for a full-time job. And what you're gonna notice is that most recruiting agencies, they have temporary jobs, they have freelance work in different areas. Sometimes they have for graphic design work, sometimes they're looking for retouchers. My advice here is go to Google, do some research about an agency that is specializes in the work that you're doing because some of the agencies are very niche markets. So if you, let's say if you specialize in beauty retouching and if you have the skills to do it properly, you wanna get in touch with these agencies because they're gonna give you a lot of work. And most is gonna be freelance, but all these gigs are really well-paid jobs. Retouchers, jobs that are for retouching, post-production for video and uh, graphic design, there's always demand for those services. And finally, all this was possible because I was doing the other half of the job, which is connecting with other people, networking. Chase Jarvis called this the other 50%, which 
which is going out there, knocking doors, have a drink with other fellow creative. It's something that I did actually last week at the Sony event. I met Danny Diamond, I, we built some content together. But here's the reality. People are not gonna discover you on the internet. You really have to go out there to join join communities and join meetup events. Things are gonna happen because you are knocking on doors. People are gonna recommend uh, your work. One of the biggest setbacks of social media is that you are not connecting in person one to one. I've been guilty of this because as a creative, sometimes we are very shy. We don't wanna go out there, connect with other people. Just like in anything, if you, are, you don't feel comfortable connecting with people, you have to go out more and just trying out. Especially if you're talking about photography and other any other creative field, I mean, you're gonna be more comfortable because you already have something in common with other creatives. It's not gonna be as hard. And the more you do it, the more you, the better you're gonna get. And uh, and the and the paybacks for this is is basically getting more clients, or getting more building a network of people that actually trust your work, which is really important. One of the advice that I got from my mentors, like really long time ago, this is a really well known piece of advice: is you want to find your top five friends. So the chances are that one of your top five friends are gonna need your services anywhere in the future. So it's really important that you build these relationships and you don't have to like go parties like crazy and, and have like a lot of friends. You only need five people in your network in order to thrive. And also you wanna be really active in social media. That's, that's why it's called social networking. <laughs> Sometimes it's really difficult to go to events because you're really busy and, or just, uh, you just don't, don't wanna go to events. So you can rely a little bit on social media, you know, keep Keep your community engaged with your work and that's how you start building because the reality is that people look at my work a lot sometimes they don't engage with my work but they know that i'm a consistent creative and that i'm a consistent artist that it's constantly building up new pieces of artwork because of social media i connected with potential clients because they're looking at what i'm posting daily daily posting in Fe facebook instagram or any other platform that, that you are uh, invested in it's always really important because people are watching people are watching and they're gonna reach out to you because they're gonna see that you're consistent and persistence is really key here so you don't wanna so you don't wanna just post personal stuff that's fine here and there but you wanna focus on your career you wanna tell your story every day what you're doing behind the scenes what you're shooting that day even if it's something personal uh, whenever i go networking i talk about my personal projects and i explain them the behind the scenes process and they see that it's quality work so you know you have a really strong portfolio that it's constantly being updated and that's how you start making more clients and especially as a content creator you're never gonna run out of photography you're never gonna run out of video I encourage you not to only post personal stuff, but be mindful about your creative work. People wanna see what you're doing. So that's it for this video. This is what I've done in my career. This is what has worked for me. To me, I started as a, as a retoucher and then I started doing photography work and it took time. So you have to be really patient and be really persistent. This is not something that you're gonna be doing for one year or two years. If you're really considering doing this as a full-time job, you have to put on the hours. So that's it for this lesson today. If, if you find these tips useful, tag your friend, leave a comment below and we'll continue the conversation next time.